Okay, so the mobile stuff that we're doing right now is I'm working on this project that's called Everyday Sensing and Perception. Okay. And do you know what mobile augmented reality is? Yes, I do. But you know what? Explain it for the camera. Okay, so mobile augmented reality. The idea is that what we're going to be doing is taking, a, for example, like a camera and a camera phone, and we're going to take computer vision we're going to be able to go through the uh, go through the images, figure out what's in it, sort of what's going on. We can figure out sort of where you are, who you're with, uh, what you're doing, and after some learning, we're doing a bunch of machine learning as well. Basically, what you what you seem to be planning to do, and we can analyze the data. You know, the sort of the the easy example that everybody always uses everybody who I work with always uses, is, oh, you can have a mobile tourist guide. And, you know, you're in Tiananmen Square, and you look at Tiananmen Gate, and there's a picture of some old guy over it, and, you know, and it pulls down that image. It does a facial recognition, because I said we can do, you know, who am I with. It does a facial recognition thing. So it's, oh, it's Mao, goes out to the web, pulls down the Wikipedia page on Mao, and gives it to you there, sort of with, you know, with graphics sort of showing that that's who it is on the image that you have. Uninteresting to me. Um, but what's more interesting is we're doing something using the same technology but doing field science. So a kid goes out into the woods. We can actually do sub-meter accuracy using um, time of flight. This is like, I'm really geeky, I don't know, I can't help it. Um, so time of flight like you can if you don't have GPS you can actually look at where you are based on how many radio signals you hear from fixed sites like uh, cell phone towers for example and usually get about you know hundred to 200 meter accuracy there but we combine it with vision and we can get sub meter accuracy can I ask you a question yeah. why would you be doing that instead of using GPS now that most new mobile devices are gonna have GPS in my uh, understanding. we have better it's better with We have this. better resolution. Okay. So if you're a kid going back out into the woods to yeah. look at the site that you're doing for your science class, and you get within 10 meters of the site, you, know, you might not be able to find it. We can get you within a meter. Wow. And then you can go and start looking to see what sorts of things are there. Um, it'll do identification. So it, like there's object recognition. So one of the, thing, you know, the examples that we always use is, um, you know, you see something that looks like an emerald ash borer. And uh, which is a bug. That, like a it's a what? It's a, dan <laughs> no. a dangerous bug. Okay. Um, it's eating a lot of ash trees right now. You see something that looks like an emerald ash borer. We can actually use the camera to and just sort of pan the area, look and see are there any ash trees here. If there aren't any ash trees, maybe it's not an emerald ash borer. The other thing it might do is actually look at the um, at the climate conditions in the recent past and say, you know what, actually, the climate's not right for an emerald ash borer to be in that state. Um, you know, but you can imagine how you might use it for field science. Um, you know, so we're looking at doing that. We're also looking at doing the exact same type of application, but instead of you know, just sort of science in a liberal curriculum, teaching about agriculture. So using a mobile device to teach a kid how to do agriculture. So WorldLinks in Zimbabwe, who we've been talking to about trying to do something, they've been building virtual worlds to teach kids how to farm. And you know, virtual worlds are very cool. Transfer may not be all that easy, but you know, they're very cool because you know, you build them and they're done. But they don't necessarily help kids if they really want to learn how to farm the land that they're in. So how do I put down a plow line given the topography right here. How do I um, how do I know what's going on? Like, am I looking at a pest? Am I looking at uh, an invasive weed, or am I looking at you know an early stage of what I planted? And you know, what's the next thing that I should do? What's the current state of the crop? Should I do anything? Um, and so we're actually looking at building sort of mobile applications that will do that, that will support. Um, teaching agriculture, um, you know, and our goal is, you know, for for young farmers in sub-Saharan Africa, because you know they, you know, they've lost a generation of farmers to AIDS and war. They and so we're actually looking at sort of how can we use mobile devices to teach kids how to farm the land.